Well, hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I hope you're having a wonderful day. I tell you, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. And I want to say this today. I'm, I'm excited about the God of the Bible, and I'm excited because I serve the God who did something that is wonderful, that is marvelous, but we've got to talk about it more and more because it's front and center in our nation and in our world, in our communities, in our neighborhoods, in our schools, everywhere. Everybody's talking, seems to me now, about race, 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 critical race theory, race. Oh, the doctrine of the Nazis, the, the doctrine of the, those who claim to be a part of a, a, a superior race, even those who suggest that people are irredeemably racist, that people are racist uh, uh, because they are, that your skin color, whether white or black, uh, determines whether you are superior or inferior. That we, we, we see, we're living in a day where we see sins today being preached, ideologies being preached and promoted today by the very same ministers who just a few days ago denounced those ideologies and declared them to be wrong. I guess what Dr. King said about judging people by the content of their character uh, is out the door now. And we're supposed to look at people and just by their melanin, melanin or lack thereof, we are to determine whether or not they are good people or evil people, godly people or ungodly people. This is a different world that we're living in today, my friends. And the Bible says this about the God of the Bible. Acts chapter number 17 and verse uh, 26. Read it when you get home or <laughs> you may be home watching this, but it says, and hath from one blood and hath made of one blood all nations of men to dwell upon the face of the earth. God made us all and we all have a common ancestry. We all date back to Adam. Yes, God made us all. Christ died for us all, and we all date back to Adam, and it is the will of God that we love one another, because I'm going to tell you something, my friends, Jesus Christ died for everyone, and any doctrine, any ideology, any teachings that teach that any group of people are irredeemably lost, that any group of people are wrong, that, that a group of people are wicked, Based on their complexion, that doctrine, that ideology is anti-Christ, it's anti-human, and it is dangerous. It is wrong. It, can, it will di divide and destroy a nation. And I'm telling you, uh, the word of the Lord speaks to these things. I've been teaching and preaching from Galatians chapter number two for some time, dealing with how the apostle Paul withstood uh, Peter. And he withstood him because of inconsistencies in Peter's walk with regards to the inner uh, relations, the interactions uh, between the Jews at the church at Antioch, Syria, and the Gentiles who were a part of that same church. And both groups were under the banner of Christian, but you know, some ugly things reared their head, uh, uh, its ugly head, and, and Paul dealt with it. So my friends tonight, we're still going to be talking about these things. And I want you to come tonight and join me right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. That's right. <laughs> Bible study. We're going to study God's word. We're going to see what the Bible says because my friends, the word of God is right. And there are no situations, no circumstances, nothing that happens that God's word doesn't address. Also, I want to ask you to pray uh, for our city. 
our town. You've heard by now of the senseless murder that took place over in the Headingham uh, community of Raleigh. And uh, you see all of the you see all the politicians now uh, say, oh, there ought to be a law. There ought to be a law. We need to do this. We need to do that. We got we got we have phrases that are meaningless that are made up uh, It's gun violence. We got to do something about gun violence. My friends, guns have never killed anybody. Guns can't shoot people. Guns are inanimate objects. We have a people problem. We have a wickedness problem with individuals. And people need to be saved. People need to be delivered. The truth needs to be preached. And there are many uh, who play politics with things like this. And they say, well, we ought to uh, 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 get a law. When in many cases, they know that what we, we, don't, we don't need to pass another law. We need to enforce the laws that are already on the books. I think it's already illegal in this state for a 15-year-old to have a firearm of any kind. Uh, I, I may be incorrect, maybe a shotgun, but certainly not a semi-automatic weapon and certainly not a, a automatic pistol or anything like that. And yet, uh, from the stories that are emerging, and they're, they're, they're developing every day, that that is what uh, this young man had. Now, the question is, how did he get it? Question is, where did he buy it? Who sold it to him? Was it sold to him? Did he get it from his parents? You know, there's, there are more questions than we have answers right now. But I do know this, that the Bible said in the last days, because men would be lovers of their own selves, because people would be uh, self-centered, because people would be godless, because people would be arrogant and proud, because people would turn their backs on God's truth, the Bible tells us that perilous times would come and we're living in perilous times. And I'm always touched by the, uh, I don't know how I should say this, but how uh, by the responses that we give. There are certain areas of town that it seems to me now is perfectly all right. Certain cities, certain places. Perfectly all right for people to blow their, each other away, kill each other in the streets. And there is basically no response whatsoever. And then if it's another side of town, then uh, uh, it, it's not all right. Well, I'm going to tell you, the senseless murder and the violence in the streets, no matter where, it's, where it is, it's wrong. And we need to pray and we need to stand and we need to enforce the laws on the books. We need we need strong people uh, in law enforcement. We need the presence of law enforcement. But above all these things, we need to pray. We need to seek the Lord. We need to ask God to protect us. And lastly, before I go, and I know what you're going to say, that's just like wooden. But there is a common denominator with all of these senseless killings. There's a common denominator. There's something going on that has cheapened life for all of us. Yes, you guessed it. And I'm going to say it. The abortion industry. As long as life is not precious, cheap, or oh, we could just kill it in the womb, because it's an inconvenience. And that's what most abortions are. They are abortions because the kid would be an inconvenience. It may keep you from being a congresswoman. It may keep you from uh, uh, going to college. It may keep the lady uh, from uh, some goal that she has. So 98% um, of the time, uh, it's not due to race. It's not due to rape, excuse me, uh, nor incest. It's that the child is an inconvenience. And what do we do? We get rid of it. All right? Well, when you can get rid of human beings that easily, and when you have people out there who actually say, there's not a human being. When you have elected officials who say that uh, a woman's life would be cheaper, it's easier if you just kill the baby. When we began to think this way, it makes life cheaper. It destroys the sanctity of human life 
for everyone. If it's not sacred in the womb, you know life is not sacred at a senior citizen's center. If it's not sacred in the room, womb, it's not sacred at the mall. Ask people who get into gunfights at the malls and begin to shoot. If it's not sacred in the womb, it's not sacred in our, the streets of our cities. It's not sacred. Oh my, it's not sacred. People now will kill you. And you ask, why did you shoot that man? Why did you stab that man? Well, I thought that they were laughing at me. Oh, I shot them because they disrespected me. Oh, I, oh, I, I, I took their life because I thought they were a part of a radical political party. Or I saw them wearing a particular hat. And that hat was a trigger. And it triggered something in me. Oh, my friends, we're living in a very different day. We're living in dangerous times. Times that the Bible prophesied of. But there's a way to correct it. There's a way to help. There's a way to stem the tide. You undo what's, what's been done. How about sanctifying the Lord Jesus in your heart? How about you who are watching out there? How about getting back on your knees and let's seek the Lord and pray? How about returning back to church? How about preachers preaching God's truth with power and authority? All of these things, yes, my friends, all of these things, they make an enormous difference. And I think that, that uh, uh, because we're not doing these things, it contributes to the wickedness that we're seeing in society today. There's an answer. It's in the word of God. The answer comes from the God who have made through one blood all nations to dwell upon the face of the earth. And since we're all made from one blood, that means there's only one race. There's no master race. There's no superior race. There's no inferior race. There's one race, the human race. There are different ethnicities. We're from different locations. We have different uh, complexions. <laughs> and speaking of the complexion, you know, I was somewhere not long ago, and I told the, the audience that I was speaking to, I told them that I am not color blind. You know, people say, I don't see color. When I look at people, I don't see color. Well, there's something wrong with you. You're color blind. I do see color. And I think it's beautiful. And I, I don't think that color is something that should divide us. I don't think that complexion is something that we should pretend not to notice and pretend to ignore. I think it's beautiful to, to, to judge a man, to say that a man or woman is uh, deficient or evil or ungodly based on their complexion is to speak a ill of the God who made them that way. So my friends, let's get off of that. Let's love each other. Praise the Lord. Not despite our skin color, because it's not to be spited, but because of it. Love each other because God made us the same and then he made us different and gave us all a moral code to live by. Praise the Lord. And gave us a spiritual code. And beyond all of that, and I'm wrapping this up, he gave us Jesus who died for us all, hallelujah, that we all might be saved, get born again, and love each other from a pure heart. All right, I've talked long enough. I'll see you tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. I'm going to give you another one for Bible study. <laughs> Yes, sir. Man, we're going to jump in the word of God and we're going to study the Bible together. I love you. See you tonight.